Hello everybody and welcome back to the Yu-Gi-Oh! European World Championship Qualifier 2016. I'm Rob Hooley, I've not actually said that today, and here is Luke Withington. Hello. Now, uh, last round I took a few little bits and bobs of highlights. I was actually gone for a little bit of a match, going to go and fetch the deck list bits so you were able to have a look. Um, so, I kind of took what you were saying and when you what you were saying was important, what was meant to be happening next, and then yeah. kind of looked to see when it was actually happening. Yeah. Uh, so if we go to highlight number one, um, this was essentially the first time that the scales were broke were broken. Yeah, uh, it didn't actually turn out to be much of important because he then immediately just came back from it. Yeah, well he, he got monkey bot didn't he? If I remember correctly. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. He, he essentially pulled exactly what he needed to yeah. be able to do to be able to get back on that. Um, yeah. But that is kind of one of the things that you want to do if you are against a pendulum deck. You want yeah. to make sure that you can break the scales, stop yeah. them from pendulum as much as you can. And uh, you know, just uh, just keep on, uh, keep them down. Just keep them down. Keep them down, man. Keep them down. Bits yeah. and bobs. <laughs> You're not gonna let me live that down. Uh, <laughs> can I go through to number two, please? Now this is just a uh, where the dragon pit starts popping things. So you got uh, a lot of toolbox going on with yeah, with your. Uh, Pendulums with your magicians. Yeah, I think uh, that was actually a really good insightful interview from Joshua about mm. the about the different engines that he plays and some really good reasoning behind them. Um, if you just missed that, you know it's going to be on YouTube later. I, I think that that's going to be one that I send people to about the pendulum deck. Good. Um, it was really insightful about how you know he was saying with the uh, with the fog blades and and things like that. Just it was so good for him to be able to just leave those fog blades there because he couldn't he couldn't hit the magic specter cards yeah yeah now um uh, number three if we go to that now is basically where the uh, last pendulum summon happened and then joshua's opponent noped noped on out of there he noped yeah there we go there's the two cards down and then he just went mm, nah, nah. <laughs> Nah. So but you can see the kind of impressive board that was going on. And the fact that Dan Daniela was not really getting much at no. all by any of those games. I think he got games. pretty unlucky, to be honest. Yeah. I yeah. don't know whether it was just Kieran. Like, Kieran in that first game was, was putting the work in. Now, can you think of anything uh, anything else that happened during that game? Because, as I say, I wasn't there for the full game. No, I think it was more of the same. It was more of the same. Just kind of really grinding, trying to get that perfect pendulum summon off. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Uh, now... Number f four, uh, I think this was the good opening over on Danielle's side yeah. that was marred by the fact that a Maxi had been played. Yeah, I need I need milled Sir as well, so, so yeah, fortunate. Yep. So he he wasn't really having a very good time with that one. Yeah. But it was pretty much more of more of the same all the way through for Danielle. He was getting really unlucky. Yeah. With his plays there. Yeah. Now, number five. If we move on, uh, this is Odd, Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon doing its thing. And uh, by that, I mean at the moment, just being very big and threatening. Yeah, and attacking was. through to 4,500 4, there as well. Yeah, and at that point, I think Daniela already knew that just getting past that Vortex Dragon was not going to be easy. Yeah. Now, it was, I did want to try and get the final one there. Uh, which was going to be when the game ended, but there wasn't really a definite point in which they kind of agreed that the game had ended. I found looking looking over the top of them, it was just kind of like they, one of them just picked up the deck and that was it. Uh, mm. And all of a sudden the game had ended. I didn't even see a handshake. No. There was no handshake. Mm. I th honestly, I think Daniela might have been a little bit annoyed about that. Yeah. Let's be honest, it was just, yeah, it was a bit brutal. A little bit brutal. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, is there anything else during those games that you think you know this is this was noteworthy? Just, I, I I'm going to say it once more. That that interview was actually really insightful from Joshua there. So people should definitely go on YouTube after this after this because it should be up very very soon. Yeah, and go and watch that if they if they're very interested in playing anything with the pendulum mechanic. Yeah, very very insightful interview. He just explained all of the different little engines, reasoning behind his cards. Yeah. Yeah, so we that's uh, basically it for that round. We are looking to go into the top 16 next, I believe. So we're getting there. We're nearly oh, we're getting, getting there. there. Yeah, it's the uh, top 16 duelists. New two more rounds, and then we well, in one after that round, we decide who goes into the top four, and the top four are the people that get to go to 
go to Worlds, don't they? Yes. So we're, it's, it's nearly all coming down to this, but yeah. not quite yet. So uh, we'll finish off there for this round. Uh, we should be back with the next round very, very soon, and we will see you then.